Hey guys, Adam in the AeroWorks Workshop, and this week we're going to be working on the firewall in the CH750 Super Duty. Now that starts on page SD75 FF01 and FF02 for those of you who are following along. So follow along with the build and let's get started. So I went ahead and got all the firewall parts uh, put on the bench there, took them all apart, got my Scotch Bright pad out and basically scuffed up the firewall. Finished a little deburring to get it ready for priming and painting. Here you can see I'm priming up some of the holes as well as getting some of the other parts ready. A trick to getting these stickers off is uh, I use Goo Gone. And basically Goo Gone is a non-toxic uh, citrus-based chemical. I wouldn't even call it a chemical, it's a cleaner. Basically soak those stickers in the Goo Gone, let them sit for a half hour, and they'll come right off. Here I waited a little bit less time and I had to scrub them with my little plastic spatula knife there. But if you let them soak, they'll be just fine. And then we're continuing on just priming, getting all these parts ready for assembly. Alright guys, it's the next morning. Uh, you can see here the firewall is all painted up. And I've got one of the other main brackets here. This is uh, the one that supports the landing gear nose gear I should say. So we're going to continue on with priming and painting up the rest of these parts. So my plan as of right now is to paint this entire firewall after it's fully assembled uh, kind of a nice gloss white just to keep everything nice and clean on the inside of the uh, engine bay. Uh, that way you can identify leaks and things like that. And on the opposite side of the firewall, it'll be painted the color of the interior of the aircraft, which is going to be a, a gray color. So we'll keep pressing on. Alright guys, here's one of those things I was talking about with the plans. Uh, again, nice looking plans here. This is specifically for the Firewall Ford, or excuse me, Firewall Assembly 1 and Firewall Assembly 2 drawings. It takes these two drawings to assemble the firewall. Now what Zenith provides is their IPL or this installation parts list. And you can see that I have basically completed here Everything on the FF01 drawing, all these pieces are assembled, and I've went ahead, and as I installed them, I always like to date and then put my initials. That way you know who did it and what the date was. This is also great for record keeping, 
and uh, it can be a way that you can uh, keep track of your build time as well, but it also shows when that part was installed. So everything on F01 has been completed. Here's where the problem comes in. We switch to F02, and we notice here that there's a mention of A6 rivets, and it locates item number 9. Well, the only item number 9 here it shows is this top bracket and they point to that middle hole there. Now, we would assume that they want A6 rivets on the whole line there. Not sure. Uh, let's go to the uh, F02 or FF02 drawing. Here's the FF02 installation parts list. And you can see on here that nowhere does it list A6 rivets at all. It doesn't even talk about them on here. So these are those kind of gaps that we're talking about that we're going to be working with Zenith on trying to get those remedied so there's not questions. We don't want somebody to put the wrong bolt or rivet in the wrong hole, undersize, oversize, etc. And this can cause a lot of frustration when you're trying to, you know, get this thing built and get it done and do it the way the manufacturer wants you to. So back to the build, guys. Hey, guys, a couple quick updates before we continue on with the build. Uh, the previous segment where I talk about uh, the A6 rivets, I did get clarification from Roger on that. He said, yes, just put A6 rivets there. No big deal. Could just be my first time building, but we'll get that note added to the uh, IPL. The second thing I noticed is that on the drawing for the firewall, they had um, one of the top brackets. They had two flanges flipped around, and I noticed that, and I was thinking, well, is that the correct way? Quick email to uh, Nick at Zenith. He does all the CAD work there. He said, hey, thanks for pointing that out. Boom, corrected it. And now we have a new drawing, so you'll appreciate that going forward for all you guys who are going to be building your uh, fuselage next. So just know that, again, this goes back to uh, picking an aircraft company that supports you. And not only do they support you, but they're extremely responsive. I don't think I've waited more than 24 hours on anything uh, as far as uh, sending them an email, getting an answer the next morning, sometimes getting an answer the same day. In the case of that drawing, I got the uh, drawing the next morning. So. Uh, Awesome work, guys. Keep it up at Zenith. Let's get back to working. All right, guys, well, here it is, the finished or 99% finished firewall. Um, a couple things I've left off for right now is the upper bearing, which, of course, goes in here, and the upper support, which comes in the finish kit as part of the landing gear assembly. Um, so you can see we've got everything riveted up. Um, here's those channels I was talking about. They had one of these flipped around on the drawings. We got that corrected for you guys. Uh, you can see I have everything primed up. Again, this is the first priming. We're probably going to reprime this again, do a light sanding, reprime, and then paint the uh, entire uh, firewall section a nice bright white so we can see everything in there when we get going with uh, the engine installation. Uh, and then the last thing I have off is just the slide covers, 
which uh, go on here to uh, create that double walled slide area where your rudder uh, push rods will go through. So all told, I would say between priming and painting and sanding and riveting, uh, probably have 10 to 15 hours of total time in here, uh, you know, with waiting for paint dry and everything. So uh, this is a pretty intricate part, including the bra brackets on the backside. Um, and there's a lot of rivets and there's a lot of angles, a lot of tight areas you got to get into. So really pay attention to drawing on that and which way you have to put the rivets because there are some you have to flip around because of clearance issues. Hopefully mine looks right. I think it does. Uh, the next thing I'm going to be working on is removing these Clecos and taking the firewall off temporarily because I've got to finish up that uh, rudder pedal section. When the finish kit gets here any time now, we're going to be installing those uh, brake solenoids and uh, the reservoir and finishing up the brake pedals and then we'll permanently put the firewall back on uh, and then we'll continue moving on with uh, everything else so uh, appreciate everybody watching again guys uh, make sure you like and subscribe it's free it doesn't cost anything and we're going to continue to have more and more in-depth videos on the construction of our zenith ch750 super duty if you have questions if you've got recommendations or comments leave them down below we'd love to read them i read every one of them and i'll answer you back uh, so i appreciate you watching uh, and until next time adam with aeroworks and we'll see you on the next one